This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Amy Miracle, and I'm the pastor at Broad Street Presbyterian Church in Columbus, Ohio. And my name is Amy Star Redwine, and I'm one of the pastors and the head of staff at the First Presbyterian Church in Richmond, Virginia. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us today, and whether you usually worship with Broad Street Presbyterian Church in Ohio or First Presbyterian Church in Virginia, you are in the right place for worship today, and we're so glad that you're here. If today is Sunday, June 28th, the service will be primarily shaped by Amy and her colleagues. Uh, if it's July 5th, the service will be primarily shaped by the folks in Columbus. Uh, either way, we have the opportunity to worship together uh, because of the gift of technology. Uh, and this enables us to more fully experience what it means to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. So let us worship God. Welcome again to this online worship service. I especially welcome the congregation of First Presbyterian Church in Richmond, Virginia. I've been thinking this past week about what our two cities have in common. Uh, we're both state capitals uh, shaped by rivers, vibrant cities, and we both have a pretty strong attachment to the state universities. Um, I realize that the University of Virginia is a little bit up the road, but I understand that you all are pretty passionate about that place. We are also two cities coming to terms with our past. Uh, this past month, our mayor announced that the statue of Christopher Columbus uh, that has stood in front of City Hall uh, will be removed and put into storage. We are both cities trying to come to terms with our past. And now I'd like to say a word about this morning's worship service. Uh, the sermon, indeed the whole worship service, is going to be a, a little bit wet. We are gonna focus on the waters of baptism. The music in this morning's service will include the folk song, The Water is Wide, and one of our favorite families, the Monzones, uh, will present Candle in the Water. And the service will begin uh, with our organist, Jim Hildreth, uh, playing the Broad Street organ. Uh, this is the first time we have heard the organ in over three months, so it's kind of a big deal. So let's not waste another minute. Let us begin. Let us worship God.
Let us speak with God about our lives. Let us pray. Merciful God, you call us to work for a world where all will be fed and have dignity, but we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace, but we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring liberty to the oppressed, but we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, Lord. Turn us to your will by the power of your spirit, so that all may know your justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Friends, baptism is the sign and symbol of our cleansing from all that separates us from God and one another. Our baptism is the sign and seal of our being engrafted into Christ. So today, let us remember our baptism. Whenever we touch water, remember our baptism. Know that the Holy Spirit is at work in and within you. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. God has made peace with us in Christ, lasting, enduring peace. Let us share that peace with one another, personally or by using our technology to reach out to those beyond our homes in this country and around the world. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen.
morning and welcome to Children's Time. I'm Miss Brittany and I work at Broad Street Presbyterian Church in Columbus and we're excited to welcome our friends from First Presbyterian Church in Richmond, Virginia today. It's fun to see how God connects us all to each other from Virginia to Ohio to around the world. So we're glad all of you kids are here with us today. You may be wondering, why is this lady sitting at a campsite? Well, last week, the kids at Broad Street did Compassion Camp, where we learned all about compassion. And I looked on your church website in Richmond, and you all are having Compassion Camp also in August. Isn't that cool that we're going to have the same kind of camp at our churches? So I set up my campsite so that we could talk a little bit about compassion, because that's the theme of Compassion Camp. It's been a great week where we learned about how compassion calls us to be brave, to love others, to love ourselves, and how we have to use our eyes and our hearts and our brains to share God's compassion with others, to help really understand and see others. So I asked our campers if they would be willing to share the camp theme with you all by sharing our special message. So here they are. I see your hurt. I feel your hurt. I eat your hurt. Did you hear what they said? I see your hurt. I feel your hurt. I help ease your hurt. Compassion is about seeing people, really seeing and hearing all kinds of people. It's about empathy and feeling really what they feel. And then it's about action, how we help ease others' pain, others' troubles. There's been a lot of troubles in the world lately. There's been a lot of really hard things. And we remember that with God, who strengthens us, we can share God's compassion and love with others. And it takes work. It takes seeing, feeling, and easing, acting. So we hope you kids Enjoy Compassion Camp later this summer in Richmond, and we hope that the Broad Street kids who did it last week continue to carry that message of compassion forward. We're so glad to connect with kids in Richmond and Ohio and around the world to share God's love and compassion with others. from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thought we had brought enough. We had two large water bottles each, but the trail was long and hard. The day was hot and there was very little shade. We had about two miles left in our hike when we drank our last drop. About a mile later, we overtook two hikers who also were, were heading out of the canyon, uh, but they were a little better prepared. And seeing our distress, they offered us some of their water. Uh, I remember swirling it around in my mouth and then deliberately swallowing it. Water never tasted so good. Shadyside is the name of a community that is found on the banks of the Ohio River. One summer night in 1990, it rained and rained and rained. And the small creek that ran through the town, um, it went over its banks. And uh, houses, trailers, and people uh, were swept into the Ohio River. 26 people drowned that night. A few years later, after that flood, I visited Shadyside and I could too easily imagine the terror as people were swept into that dark, churning water. Water, it takes life and it gives life, which makes it the perfect symbol for baptism. Yeah, this morning I'm, I'm preaching about baptism and, and I know that may seem an odd choice um, because uh, right now, uh, during these pandemic days, both of our congregations are um, separated from this sacrament. Uh, we haven't yet figured out a way to baptize uh, during this uh, strange time that we're in. Um, but I want to talk about baptism today um, because this is perhaps one of the deepest, most powerful things we do as communities of faith. And I think baptism might have some resources for us. Uh, that are helpful during this time. Uh, author and pastor Barbara Brown Taylor um, has a baptism story. Um, it, it, it's a baptism that, that took place at an Easter vigil in an Episcopalian church. Um, the candidate uh, for baptism was a three-year-old girl named Ellen. Now Ellen's parents wanted her to be baptized by immersion, uh, which was problematic uh, in a church that had a baptismal font similar to the one found in both of our churches. Um, but the priest was a, an enterprising uh, fellow and um, he took a 36 gallon garbage can um, and he decorated it with ivy and filled it with water and placed it in the church that night. Well, when Ellen uh, came into the dark church and, and she saw that garbage uh, can, she stiffened, um, but her parents had prepared her well um, and she did everything she was told to do up until the time when the priest leaned down to pick her up. And then she said, don't do it. Please don't do it. Now, I would argue that Ellen was a very smart little girl and she correctly understood the radical nature of baptism. Uh, threatened with the waters of baptism, she stood her ground and said no. Have you ever listened closely to the liturgy we use when we baptize? Uh, right there in the prayer of thanksgiving over the water, um, in this water we are buried with Christ in his death. Now what could baptism possibly have to do with death? I mean, baptism is all about babies and new life and hope, and that's the opposite of death, right? Well, we don't make a big deal about this with expectant parents, but it has always been the claim of the church that in this act of baptism, we die. Yes, we die. And that's what Paul says in this morning's reading. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? The early church often built its baptismal fonts in the shape of tombs. Now, what does it mean exactly to die in baptism, to be baptized into Christ's death? Well, I think it means letting go of those things that separate us from God. Put another way, what within us needs to die to be the person God wants us to be? What, what ambitions and illusions and desires need to die so that we can embrace 
the abundant life God offers to us in baptism. Now, I, I want to go just a little deeper into this topic. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about the specifics of the death of Jesus. We don't focus too much on the details of his last few days, his, his arrest, his experience with the criminal justice system. We don't think too much about the way he was treated by the authorities of his day, beaten while in custody, then paraded through the streets. And then there was the cruel way he was killed, death by crucifixion. It was, it was barbaric. It was death by slow, painful asphyxiation. I can't breathe, Jesus might have said. It was a horrible death. People shouldn't experience that kind of a death. What do we who are baptized, what do we need to do in order to make sure no one else experiences such a death? What needs to die in us as individuals, as communities, as the church? What do we need to let go of so that no one experiences such a death? What needs to die in order for all of us to live, to flourish, to enjoy God and God's creation? Now, I have a few possible answers to that question. Uh, the idea that systemic racism is a problem that can wait for another day to solve and to address, that, that needs to die. Thinking that it is not our problem uh, to solve, that needs to die. The idea that systemic racism is, is just too big for us to address, that needs to die. And then there is our habit of losing focus, of chasing after the next shiny, shiny thing, of moving on to something else, that too needs to die. These things need to die. What else needs to die in order that all of God's people can breathe, can live, so that all of God's people can experience the resurrection hope promised to us in baptism? Because baptism is about more than death. If it were just about death, my goodness, no one would do it. They wouldn't subject their children to it, and they certainly wouldn't go out for brunch after church to celebrate it. Baptism like our Christian story, is also about resurrection. In baptism we die and then we are born anew. Paul puts it this way, therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so we too might walk in newness of life. Oh, I like the way that sounds, to walk in newness of life. We desperately need newness of life. So we are buried with baptism, so we might rise to new life. Now, wouldn't it be great if that was a once in a lifetime, one and done kind of a thing? That in the act of baptism, all that needs to die does, and we are reborn in perfection, and then we live the rest of our lives in perfect harmony with God and with God's people. Wouldn't it be great? if baptism eliminated hatred and bias, and we emerged from the baptismal waters as paragons of virtue and champions of justice. But no, that's not how it works. Yes, baptism is a once in a lifetime event, but then we spend the rest of our lives trying to figure out what it means to live a baptism-shaped life, which means we never get past, the, we never get to the point where we stop dying to our old way of life in order to embrace this new life offered to us by Christ. Now this aspect of baptism may be best understood by those who battle life-threatening addictions. They have learned that the day never comes when they have that, under, that addiction under control. But it's a matter of defeating it every day, every day, every day. Such folks know that the dying to the old way of life is scary and hard, and it is the only way to get to the newness of life promised by God. Now, I have very bad vision. Without these glasses, I really can't see anything past about here. Um, 
Now, when, when I was little, um, I would go to my, with my family uh, to the beach. And um, I loved going out into the water. And I would inevitably stay in the water longer than everyone else. The rest of the family uh, would go back onto the beach and back to the blanket. Um, and, um, but the, the time would eventually come when I would uh, be ready to, to get out of the water and return to my family. Um, but of course, you know, over the course of, of time, I would have drifted a little bit further down the, down the beach. Um, so when I came out of the water, um, there was always a, a big problem. I, I, I couldn't see uh, to find my family. Um, the only way I had of identifying who was on any given blanket was to, was to, re to, to bend down, scrunch my eyes and hope that I saw something familiar. And, and this strategy never worked and, and always inevitably led to embarrassing situations. Um, so um, I would simply stand on the beach and wait for my family to come and get me. Now they always did. But first I always experienced a few moments of terror. As I stood there on the beach dripping wet, unable to see, afraid, waiting to be claimed. The waters of baptism do that to us. They leave us standing vulnerable, exposed, having let go of those things that separate us from God, uncertain of what will replace them, waiting, hoping, to be claimed by God. Now, as a community, as churches, as a nation, that's where we are right now. On the beach, unable to see very far, stripped bare, uncertain of what happens next. Last week, about 20 Broad Streeters gathered on Zoom to talk about racism. Uh, specifically, we were debriefing the 21-day the race equity challenge um, that both of our congregations have embraced. Now, at the beginning of that conversation, I, I asked my small group uh, to share one word about how they were feeling uh, about the, this conversation. Um, curious, one person said, uncomfortable, said another, vulnerable, said someone else. Yeah. That's where we are right now. It's not an easy place to be. It's a scary place to be. It's the only place for us to be because we are baptized. The waters of baptism do that to us. They leave us standing vulnerable and exposed, having let go of those things that separate us from God and certain of what will replace them, waiting, hoping to be claimed by God. And the wonderful, amazing thing is that we always are. We always are. Friends, for those brave enough to live out their baptism, death awaits. But beyond that death, newness of life. So I challenge you to take baptism seriously for your sake, for the sake of the world. Amen.
Today, our prayer is shaped by our baptismal liturgy and by the lyrics from America the Beautiful and lift every voice and sing. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for water. Through the gift of water, you nourish and sustain all living things. In the beginning, your spirit moved over watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the waters of the Jordan River, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. We thank you for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your love extends into the deepest waters, into the deep ends of our lives. We thank you that you are willing to take on anything and everything which keeps us from you. Show us how we can be reborn this day in our place and time. Help us to claim the deep promises of baptism, that if we are willing to let some things die, you promise a newness of life. For you are at work in our world, in and through, among and around us, to let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this 4th of July weekend, surrounded by red, white, and blue, we give thanks for beautiful, spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. O oh Lord, this is our request. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, this is our prayer to keep us on the right path. Stay with us as we struggle in life and faith, as we open ourselves to hard questions, as we recognize our need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. America, America, God, mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Eternal God, help us face our flaws as a society, as individuals. Help us face our resistance to others, our layers of privilege invisible to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years. Dr. King had a dream. Dreamers have dreams. O oh, God, wake us up from our dreams that all is well. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, broaden our perspective on what is beautiful. Thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. Open us to see and claim beauty where we may not have seen or claimed it before. May love enable us to say that black is beautiful, that black and brown bodies are beautiful, that black children matter, black futures matter, that black lives matter. For indeed we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with servanthood from sea to shining sea. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God of compassion in life and in death, you call us your own. We pray for those in need of healing this day and for those facing grief. And we offer our thanks for the opportunity to worship freely and our gratitude that through technology and by the power of your spirit, the congregations of Broad Street Presbyterian Church in Columbus and First Presbyterian Church in Richmond and all others worshiping this day are connected as siblings in Christ. We belong to you and nothing can separate us from your love. These things we pray in Jesus' name, saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In response to the work of the Spirit in our communities and in our lives, we have gifts to share. We invite you to give through your church's website or by sending a check to the church. May we know the joy of those who give with their whole hearts. Amen. We give thanks for these two wonderful weeks of worship, sharing with one another here in Columbus, Ohio, and in Richmond, Virginia, and wherever you are in God's wide world. As you live into this day and in the days to come, remember your baptism. And now go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, honor all people. 
love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.